Hi Fiona, ein kurzes Hallo aus dem Westerwald. Oh, hallo. Schön, dass du zuguckst. Um, so, hi everybody. Welcome. I want to try something different this time. Ja, ich freue mich auch, dich zu sehen. I want to try something different today. I will switch into a character and um, uh, I will tell you stories, medieval stories. Uh, some of them might be more or less true <laughs> and some of them will be completely made up by me um, but uh, to every story I will sing a song that it will um, will be included in the story somehow so I want to hear how you like that and if it is nice if it is good or if you think it's too boring because I'm talking too much so hello wie geht's dir? Um, so I will do that. I will now switch to my character Regulau, the uh, wandering harpist that brings you stories from afar and near and um, I um, won't tell you that all my stories are completely true because only a lion would tell you that. So um, my first story is when I met a young knight that told me that his great-grandfather had actually um, been fighting for the Richard the Lion King um, and his crusades to Jerusalem. He was uh, very keen on um, protecting Christianity in Jerusalem, but when he was there and saw that amazing city and how peaceful people from different cultures and different religions could live together, He wavered in his decision a little bit. And then, one day, he fell very ill. Um, he felt like his side was going to burst because of such intense pain. So, um, And also, he had a very high fever and his companions believed he wouldn't survive the night. A maid came and um, said that she knew a physician that could maybe help him but it wasn't a Christian. In his desperation, he didn't care, so he let the maid help him and bring him towards the physician. With all their might, they all barely um, made it to the steps of the physician. And there, the physician took him in. He uh, examined him without much words and gave him something for the pain. With skillful hands, he cut the evil out of him. And at the next day, he was very weak, but at least he was out 
of any danger to his life. He was so grateful that he promised that one day he would repay this debt and he would also try to save his life. And so, when the Crusaders finally did invade Jerusalem, he went to the house of the physician and smuggled him out of the city. They traveled many days and then they almost believed they will make it. But then one day a group of young crusaders that were not, they were very eager to fight, um, stopped them and questioned them. They asked them, what are you doing? Where are you going? And the bold knight answered, we are in a secret mission and you shouldn't disturb us. But they seemed skeptical and they wanted to interrogate also the physician. And now the knight was really worried because uh, he wasn't sure if he could answer their questions. But the physician, instead of answering any questions, sang the song he had heard from the knight time and time again. The song Palestina Lied from the master Walter von der Vogelweide and this dispersed every doubt of the knights. And the song was this. <laughs> traveling and I stopped at a castle and the Lord invited me to stay for a few days and play for his family and I um, spent some time there and the youngest of his children, his youngest daughter, actually told me her story, which was interesting. She told me that some time ago a group of traveling knights had stopped in their castle and were asking for shelter. And her father was very gracious, so they stayed for a time. Um, one of the knights, she said, was the handsomest man she had ever laid eyes on. And also he was so charming and so smart, so she fell in love immediately with him. When he caught her eyes, she blushed so intensely. And soon after, she stumbled on him on the gardens. When he saw her, he grabbed her hand and fell on his knees and swore her his love for her, that she was the fairest of all ladies and that she please have mercy with him and release him with the sweet kiss of hers. She was completely shocked and very scared about the intensity of his um, speech, so she freed herself and ran off. At night, she found a letter that was passed under her door, and there it said that he loved her so much, and this was such a pure and true love, and um, that she please don't be cold towards him, and because he has to leave soon again, he hopes that she will come to his bedchambers and he will show her how much he loves her. Yes, indeed. Shocking. Um, she was very, very shocked about this request as well, so he, she burned the letter immediately. But on the next night, 
After dinner, he took out his lute and started to sing the sweetest song she had ever heard. He said, Oh, sweet, beautiful lady, how can you believe that anyone is above you? And my heart wants nothing but to be in your power, so please have mercy on me. So she melted away and decided to go to the bedchambers that night. Even though she had planned that, her handmaid was chatting and telling so much gossip that she didn't want to hear that night. So it was pretty late when she left, finally. She then snuck out of her rooms, barefooted and hidden by the darkness of the night. She went to the room of her beloved one. But when she arrived, she heard noises from inside. And it was not only his voice, but also the voice of a woman. And there was no doubt about what they were doing. So she, was, she got furious. She slammed the door, door open. She grabbed the clothes of the knight and the lady and she threw them out of the window. The woman started screaming, but she didn't care and she just went outside with her ha head held high open. And she decided on that moment she will never ever believe the sweet words of any gallant knight again. <laughs> and the song that he had sang for her was this. <laughs> The Sonorité Française Medievales. We oui. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Nice. That's so sweet. Wunderschön Französisch Harpa. Yes. <laughs> Quelle hermosa canción. Que belle chanson. Merci beaucoup. Um, so, if you travel as much as I do, you often get to know sailor men and their stories as well. I um, always tried to travel to England with an old fisherman that had the best stories of all. So I went to him again, but this time I was frightened when he opened the door because he looked so thin and pale and not well at all. He said, you have to go away. I can't travel, so go to one of my colleagues. But I couldn't leave him like that. It was too many years of friendship so I decided to go to the market and to buy some food and I gathered some herbs that I hoped would help him. And I went back and cared for him as well as I could for days or even weeks. But it, even though it took a little while, he did get better. And he was so, so grateful uh, that he wanted to give me a present. 
he gave me a golden cup, which would have been a very handsome gift on itself, but the story that he told me made it absolutely invaluable. He said that the king in Thule had once had this cup that his mistress had gave it to him, and it was his most precious possession, and he didn't want to inherit it to his son, so when he was about to die, he went on a high mountain and threw the cup down in the sea so that no one else could have it. But the fisherman had picked it up and was giving it now to me. The song that he sang to it was this. Es war ein König in Thule, gar treu besann sein Grab, dem Sterben seine Pule einen goldenen Becher gab. Es ging Eventually, listening with headphones. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Irina. Qué hermoso voz tienes. Muchas gracias. So eventually, I did come to England, and there, a um, lady t told me the story that she knew someone that um, had served in the court. So, so um, she knew about the king. Henry VIII and about his love uh, for Anne Boleyn. He had cast away his faithful king Catherine of Aragon only to be able to seduce Anne Boleyn. At first she didn't really want to, so it was said that he wrote this song and maybe it had helped um, to win her heart over. It is green sleeves. Alas, my love, you do me wrong to cast me off discourteously, and I have loved you for so long, delighting. Agree. 
thank you, you're great, that's so sweet, thank you so much, tienes la más bella y dulce, maravillosa, te lanzosa voz del mundo, ay, muchas gracias, uh, thank you, that's so sweet, what a beautiful song, oh, thank you, beautiful, hi, my dear friend, how are you doing, so, um, yes, That was green sleeve. Gracias. Gracias a ti. So, um, also in England, they told me another story of a young and silly girl that fell in love with a um, very good looking young man that was, was pretty arrogant and had absolutely no interest in her. She was so desperate that she tried to find a solution to that. So she went to a wise woman um, that um, and asked her for help because she knew a lot about herbs and all that stuff. So she asked her for a love potion. And um, she said she would um, be able to Um, brew her a love potion if, if she brings her uh, parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. And um, she mixed it with a special wine and she said that she should give it to this young man on the next som summer solstice feast as um, uh, for him as a beverage and she did that and she, you see He, it actually worked. He fell in love immediately with her. They were betrothed to each other in just a few weeks. And she was so happy, she thought, now her um, fate will change and she will be so happy. Um, but then she realized that this young man was very arrogant and very demanding and She didn't really like him as much now that she had him. He continuously asked things of her. He was very demanding on their wedding and on the house that they will live in. And yes, he gave her the most complicated tasks ever. So she tried to get out of this engagement and asked him if they could part ways. But he was still under the influence of, uh, influence of this love potion. So he said... Of course not, and a promise is a promise, so they will ha will get married in a few months. She didn't have any other solution than to escape and to flee to a country far away, and they actually never heard of her again. But the young man, still in love because of the love potion, started asking all the people that traveled by, especially people that were going to the fair in Scarborough, if they had seen her and um, if so he gave them a list of tasks that she should do before they get wet so the song to the song to the story goes like this are you going to scammer off them
you never knew that story behind the song. Yes, and it is completely and utterly true. What a beautiful, amazing song. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I love this song. Yes, it is a beautiful song. Yikes. Oopsie. Yes, indeed. So maybe don't use a love potion because it is quite dangerous. You won't get rid of him ever again or her, perhaps. I have to open for my cat. Just one minute. Amber, I knew the version that I was an album lover. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe the story's changed sometimes. <laughs> Although the results, it's the same. Yes, <laughs> it is true. So sometimes stories are told again and again, and sometimes they change a little bit, but they're nonetheless true because the core of it is true. Another story is about um, a band of robbers that um, found a place to live in an old castle that was falling apart. It, was, it had been struck by lightning, so it was parted in two. And they lived in the ruins of one of the castle, of the, one of the parts of the castle. The leader of this robber's band had a daughter, and he loved her very much. He doted on her, and he, was in, he, he cared a lot for her. She grew up there very free, and she was traveling in the woods and uh, had, a, had a very nice life, actually. But one day, a rivalry, uh, rival um, robbers band came and they set themselves in the other part of the castle, so the other half uh, of the castle that was adjacent but was not connected. Of course, the um, initial robbers band was furious about that and they started a little war between them. They were fighting all the time. But the daughter of the leader actually started a friendship with the son of the leader of the other robbers band and they grew so close that they felt like they were family. One day both leaders got to know this truth about them that they were gotten to be friends and they wanted to stop this in however they could but the kids were stubborn and they had a little bit of help from their mothers. So, at the end, both leaders had to accept the friendship of their kids and a peace came about and even uh, some kind of, uh, of work together. So, um, it is said that now, after some years, when they grew up, the friendship became love and now Ronja, the daughter of the robber, sings this lullaby to her children the same way her mother had sung this lullaby to her.
David. Welcome to the storytelling and song time. Oh, thank you, Amber. So the next song is not about people at all. New favorite, yay! It's not about people at all. It is just about this song, which has a interesting story of itself. You see, the song actually was a drinking song, and it had quite the lewd uh, language, actually. Um, in the second verse, it said something like, "You must love me because I love you." And afterwards, it described quite detailed how this should happen. It is not PG at all. Um, but as the time passed, this song actually became a nursery rhyme, a nursery song for little kids. So I think maybe it is a symbol or a metaphor for what can happen or what's the conclusion of this type of encounters. I will sing the PG version, so the kids song. But you can imagine the lutus, the most descriptive song you can imagine. I'm pretty sure you won't get to what the original is. You can Google it afterwards if you want to. When I am king, you shall be queen, you shall be queen. very far from here, they once lived a lady that um, was married to the lord of this um, castle when she was just 17. And um, his the lord was uh, twice her age. Of course, this marriage was, um, was a contract between himself and her father. And she got only to know him on the day of their marriage. She was very scared and he was very cold to her. He didn't seem interested in her at all, even though she was such a beautiful and charming woman. Um, even in their wedding festivities, he didn't even glance at her. He ignored her almost the whole time. Uh, she felt so lonely in her own wedding day. Afterwards as well, she was quite scared that he might be a lot in her bedchambers, but that didn't happen. He actually enjoyed more going out hunting with his friends than spending any time with her. But she did feel, as I said, pretty lonely. So when she then heard that um, a young man, which he, she had knew, known for a long time because as kids they had played together, uh, was coming because he had some business with her husband, she was thrilled to have a friendly face of, around her. Even though, of course, um, he and her husband were busy at times, he also find time to spend with her chatting about the past and about the present, and they very much enjoyed each other's companies. They went for walks and just enjoyed the nature and the peacefulness of it all. She felt happy again. One day, she saw him sitting under an old oak tree. And when she came nearer, she saw how grim and sad he looked. 
So she asked him what the matter was. He stared at her and right into her eyes and said, because the most beautiful flower in all this place I will never be able to have. Because of his piercing eyes, it was clear to her what he was meaning. She froze and she couldn't move even when he stood up and left her standing there. The next day he left and was not to come back. She watched him leave and um, in that moment she knew that she also loved him, but that this love should never be, and it was forbidden even to think about it. But it happened a lot that she stood there under the oak tree, looking out at the meadows and watching the falcons fly, wishing that she could also be a falcon and to fly there where her loved one was. And the song to that story is this. That's so sweet. Yay, Dominique! I'm so happy you came to listen to this song. Magic. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Falkenflug. Yes, indeed. Falkenflug. Thank you. So, the next story is also about a very shocking love story. I don't know uh, all the details about the story, but it is said that once a monk fell in love with a nun that lived in a monastery in a convent nearby. And um, even though, of course, their love was forbidden, they managed to meet sometimes far in the woods. And also they sent each other love letters, the most beautiful love letters. And in one of those love letters, this poem was found where the song was made up. Du bist mein, ich bin dich. Du bist mein, ich bin dich.
wunderbares Lied. Dankeschön. Du bist mir. Ja, genau. That was beautiful, Rina. Oh, thank you so much, David. Hola, Rina. Hola, Fernando. Hi, how are you doing, Gergis? So, the last song for today is actually um, another interesting so story a young um, girl from this town here told me. She told me that um, there was a group of women, of girls, that she greatly admired and she said they are so beautiful and so sparkling and uh, so vivid and, and so popular and she just wanted to be friends with them at all costs. But uh, it was pretty difficult and she had to be very, very persistent to get their attention. But she was and one day they told her she could prove herself to them. She had to bring some gifts and she had to come at midnight to uh, the woods nearby. She, they said she should bring a bottle of wine, a big loaf of bread and a handful of those um, pointy hat uh, mushrooms that uh, were growing on the meadow. She did as she was told and um, she went there at midnight. When she arrived in the woods she saw a fire uh, in, at that place and the girls were just dressed in their nightgowns and some of them were sitting and playing with the lute and singing while the others were dancing around the fire. She was hypnotized by this image and um, she almost didn't notice when the eldest of the women came to her and took the gifts from her. They, she started to brew something and uh, then she gave her a drink to taste and so she did. She told me it had to be a magical potion because at once she started transforming into a bird and she flew high above the woods and she saw everything from above. She saw the town and she saw her own house and she felt so free and so powerful and just the most amazing feelings ever. When she woke up the next morning, she was a girl again, just laying there on the wet grass. And she also told me the song that they had sung at the fire. And the song was this one.
David, I'm so happy you enjoyed this. And um, so, if you like to, um, it would be awesome if you can tell me how you liked it in the comments. Um, I will post this afterwards, or you can send me a message and tell me how you liked it. So, how about if I can to join your life again? Yes, I'm so happy too, Dominic. It was awesome. That was so tall. Thank you, beautiful, and thank you for a wonderful performance and fun stories. Yay! Thank you. Um, so yeah, and if you also want to, I have put my PayPal account um, as well. Uh, so if you want to give me a little bit of a tip, you can do that as well. Um, but most of all, I would love to hear your feedback, how you liked it, and if you have enjoyed it with the stories and the songs as well, because it's something new I'm trying out. And um, if you like it, maybe I will do this again sometime. So just please let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining and thank you for all your wonderful comments. Thank you, Radio Emmer Easy. Wonderful. Thank you, Kermosa Cancion. And uh, so thank you for all your support and I uh, will see you soon again. Bye. <laughs>